our CEO, Ms. Neelima, and the Dean of the Medical School, Professor Lakshmi Prasanna, my senior deans and colleagues and faculty of Anurag University, my dear friends from both the medical school and all other schools who are, who are here, a warm welcome to all of you. Summer is coming, so I should say warm welcome to all of you. Um, first of all, whenever we have a, a distinguished speaker to come and then speak, I think we should not take the time away that is given to him and the students to benefit from them, so I'll keep myself uh, very brief. Um, one of the problems with all of us who have started our careers as teachers, once we have students and mic, we think uh, the session should go for 90 minutes. So I will not take 90 minutes, as I'm not threatening you. I'll just spend a couple of minutes. Um, and you know the times that we're living in, we call them VUCA times, right? Volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous times that we're living in. The technology is dramatically changing. It's not only for the technology people and computer science people, even for medicine. something in the beginning of your career that would take you till you retire. But now you have to constantly keep learning. What you learned three years ago is no longer relevant because technology is emerging. Every field is emerging at dramatic pace. It's very exciting as well as it's challenging. But out of that couple of very important things are learning and memory. Right? Telugulo Samitho Nadi, Anni Unnega Nalu Notlo Shainundani. Meeru Manchi Pantal Undatsu, Klaaslu Bhoth Undatsu, Pariksha time lo yada rag pote the waste. Neither do patient or chindu. If a patient comes and they are not able to remember what the issue was, what is it, how to look at it, no point in doing that. So these two are critical functions of to exist as a human being. First of all, uh, in a modern society especially. So that's the reason why when he wanted to talk on learning and memory, I said uh, please do welcome. He also was very particular that the engineering students also come and then join. Because he believes that knowledge is not uh, narrow. It is we who make knowledge into boxes and pieces. He it says, it's not my department, not my knowledge. But when a patient or a person or somebody comes with a problem, he or she brings a completely integrated problem. You can't say that this is uh, this problem. Especially in emergency room, if some patient comes, he could be having a heart condition, he could be bleeding, he could be having this, that, and the other half a dozen things. So it is all multidisciplinary. So that's one of the things advantages of you participating in a university, that you get a chance to work with engineering students, engineering students get a chance to work with you, and our pharma students engage with you. So it's a, a 360 degree view you would get as a student, and that's the benefit. Otherwise, if you join an engineering college, an engineer would only know engineering. But here there's an opportunity for you to develop an algorithm uh, to, to discover an, uh, an, a molecule in pharma. So that is the beauty of all of this. Without uh, much ado, I wish all of you a wonderful learning uh, opportunity. Please ask questions. Um, the only way to learn is uh, asking questions. There is no shame in not knowing, right? None of us were born with knowledge. None of us. Nobody, including all the senior people who are sitting here, including me. All of us learn by asking. So feel free to ask questions. There will be mics floating around, right? So I will not take any more time. Um, wish you a wonderful learning experience. Thank you very much, Professor Bhaskar, for agreeing at such a short notice. I uh, have a very bad habit of, uh, I had a reputation where I used to recruit people. There's a board that used to keep my office. Trespassers will be recruited. So uh, he came to Hyderabad uh, for his daughter to write an exam. Then I said, why don't you extend it by one more day and then come and then visit our campus and share some thoughts. Uh, I must thank him for graciously agreeing with such a short notice to extend, because his uh, surgeons are busy all the time, and uh, NIMS, NIMHANS is one of the most 
premier institutes in the world, in the country, maybe in the world, it's more than 100-year-old institutions. So let's all give him a big hand for accepting <laughs> to come here. All right. So uh, there's one shloka, I'll explain that, and then after that, we can start off. This is the first shloka in Bhattwari. It says, Dikkaladya anava chinnananta chinmatra murtaye swanabhutiye ka manaya namashantaye tejase. I bow to that light which has not changed from the beginning of time and space and that which is peaceful and that which is noble only by self-experience. Swa anubhuti eka manaya. To that I bow. So with that invocation, I hand over the mic back to my younger colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for showering us with your pearls of wisdom. As we prepare to gain knowledge and valuable perspective, I request our beloved Dean, Dr. Lakshmi Prasanna Ma'am, to grace the dais and speak a few words regarding the occasion. Respected dignitaries on the dais, Neelima Madam, CEO of Anurag University, Dr. Balaji, Registrar, Randag University, and our resource faculty, Professor Dr. Malla Baskar, sir. Uh, uh, dignitaries of the dais, senior teachers, colleagues, and my dear students. Very good morning to one and all. Uh, let me have a quick uh, overview about the genesis of our Neelima Institute of Medical Sciences. It is indeed a privilege to be a part of this wonderful family, Anurag University. The university has been an ever-growing entity responsible for sculpturing the careers of many students and is presently serving the community in the best manner possible. The sacredness, sanctity and the vision of our leader, Chairman Sir, whose steps were followed in a true sense by the leaders of this institute, their teamwork and immense hard work have shaped the institute into a learning temple. This learning temple provides an umbrella under which thousands of students have prospered and many more are in the phase of educational transformation. As I have heard, the seed for this legendary educational hub was sown way back in 1990 when the Gayatri Educational and Cultural Trust was founded. In 1998, the first baby step was taken in the form of establishment of Lalita Degree College with UG courses such as BA and BSc. In 2002, there blossomed a flower in the form of CVSR Engineering College and the technical speed gave up with the introduction of full-time MBA in 2006. Subsequently, there was introduction of many other courses, expanding the educational reach to many of the enthusiastic students. In 2010, the different educational entities were molded into a unique group named as Anura Group of Institutions. The achievements of this institute were escalated further by the receipt of autonomous status from University Grants Commission in 2014. In 2020, a milestone in the form of recognizing the education hub as Anurag University was achieved with the nursing agricultural institutes as its new affiliated branches. In 2023, a history was created in the chapter of Anurag University by obtaining letter of permission for starting MBBS course in the month of March and a total of 150 students started their new journey towards their goal of becoming successful doctors to serve the community. I feel honored to share the dais in the midst of adorable personalities who are not only known for their academic excellence in their fields, but also are excellent entrepreneurs in laying the foundations for a bright future and success of the student community. Relevant uh, topic right now, sir, learning and memory. Why? Because we are teaching uh, brain dissection in anatomy, functions of brain in physiology and the enzyme markers in uh, central nervous system and it is the relevant topic right now sir <laughs> to conclude we are life uh, learning is a continuous process we are all lifelong learners because life never stops teaching thank you thank you ma'am for your insightful words today 
we are honored to have Dr. Bha Dr. Malla Bhaskar Rao sir with us. Sir is presently working as Professor of Neurosurgery at National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosurgery, Bangalore. With over 30 years of experience and 80 publications to his credit, Sir has made substantial contributions to neuroscience in general and epilepsy in particular. He is an active member of Epilepsy Surgery in Resource Poor Region Task Force by International League Against Epilepsy. Dr. Malla Bhaskar Rao Sir is present president of Indian Epilepsy Association. Sir has been bestowed <laughs> Sir has been bestowed with numerous awards including Young Investigator Award by International League Against Epilepsy, Senior Research Scholar Award and Common Commonwealth Fellowship Award. May I now request Dr. Malla Bhaskar Rao sir to share his knowledge on the topic learning and memory with the, us. So good good morning to all of you. My Apple Watch is showing that uh, my heartbeat has gone up to 120. <laughs> in in my life, I think uh, this is the biggest uh, gathering. Even I am uh, uh, addressing uh, not only for students, even for me. Uh, this is going to be uh, a learning uh, exercise. I believe there is a mix of both doctors and engineers. Uh, how many are engineers actually? Sir? Man man management. Okay. Uh, how many are management students? Okay. Uh, uh, I don't have to ask rest because they are all doctors, isn't it? Any pharmacy students are also there? Okay. So, uh, uh, how many of you, uh, how many of you have seen brain surgery before? Uh, how many of you would like to see the brain surgery? Oh my goodness, uh, all? So, uh, <coughs> can you please uh, switch off these lights, the, only these three lights. So this is how this is how brain surgery is being done. Just have a look. It's a very brief uh, clipping. No. happening 
I'll just brief you. I'll run the video once again and then I'll tell you a few things. No. Yeah. 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 when there is a blood vessel is cut using a very small amount of electrical current the bleeding will be stopped see i think uh, all the doctors in this hall should thank their engineering friends because we are like end users most of the gadgets you take uh, microscope you take the navigation unit lot of surgical instruments all are designed by engineers okay <laughs> now <coughs> now uh, 45 years ago uh, i was a student just like you you can uh, identify me here and uh, over the years <laughs> over the years i became a neurosurgeon i i wish to see you as brilliant uh, doctors and engineers in the years to come uh, best wishes i i went through uh, great hardship during my uh, studies it is very difficult to tell in words the hardship which i went through as a student i'll show you one very small movie clip uh, i don't know how many uh, how many of you have seen you people go to movies isn't it yeah, there is a movie called happy gilmore anybody has seen happy gilmore this uh, brief video clipping some 30 40 seconds will tell you about my life history okay here it goes so so you know that uh, i am a clinician i am actually a surgeon my job is to see patients and do surgeries and go home i i am not a public speaker but uh, here is an opportunity for me to ignite uh, uh, young minds share uh, some of the insights which i learned uh, uh, during uh, my uh, brain uh, surgery service uh, which may be useful to you okay so this topic learning and memory is clearly it's out of my comfort zone but i'll try my best to uh, give you some information uh, you are all uh, uh, our future okay so uh, during covid uh, world uh, has learned that doctors alone cannot control covid actually covid was controlled by basic science people all the vaccines and uh, 
epidemiological things came, doctors only treated patients who were suffering with the disease. But the disease control was done largely by basic science. For example, you take vaccines. So this sort of uh, hybrid uh, specialist, like uh, uh, as doctors you will excel in your field, as engineers you will excel in your field. But if you work together, a lot of uh, new information, new new knowledge uh, can be can be can be generated. Actually, you you do, uh, uh, madam. I ha I have water. No, no problem. I have water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, in uh, 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 read on uh, uh, on Google about Stanford design model, when a new product has to be designed, who are all the people Stanford University assembles, and then how they make uh, progress. Even, even in India also, this was uh, realized that uh, med schools alone, alone cannot solve health problems of India. Uh, for example, uh, IIT, uh, IIT Kanpur has got a uh, post graduation on uh, medical uh, technology. Uh, engineers do not know about medicine, and doctors are not uh, coming forward. Uh, because doctors are basically, it all starts after 10th standard. If you are scared of mathematics, you will join medicine. <laughs> and then after finishing MBBS, if you are asked to go back to engineering and then design something, it's very difficult. So, uh, Government of India permitted IIT Kanpur, uh, uh, IIT Karakpur, and after that IIT Chennai, several uh, uh, institutions, uh, to start med schools, they want to groom uh, young minds in both uh, technology, in medicine and uh, engineering. Uh, you know, uh, radiology. In COVID time, uh, artificial intelligence played a big role. Like, uh, we can't, uh, uh, doctors are, there are not enough doctors to check everybody's chest x ray. So, AI can detect whether chest x ray is normal or abnormal. That's all. Normal, large majority exclude. Only limited number of uh, positive x-rays are given to doctors for further diagnosis. Okay. So, uh, now, after what we learned from COVID, there is a concern that uh, uh, a artificial intelligence may take over radiology field completely. So, Indian Institute of Science is coming with a med school in Bangalore. What they are doing, you know, they are starting MD, MTech course together. Same person, same doctor will be trained in radiology, same doctor will be trained in artificial intelligence also. So, that sort of integrated uh, uh, programs are, uh, are happening PhD. So, whatever information, little bit of information on the memory and learning I am going to share, it is all based on the published literature. Okay, You can verify with uh, Google, you can verify with ChatGPT and some of the images uh, are purely are from public domain and purely for the uh, illustrative uh, purpose uh, uh, only and no financial disclosures during this uh, presentation. So this is uh, not one way. So I want a uh, lot of people, volunteers to uh, uh, interact. Okay. Uh, those of you would like to uh, answer or point something, please raise your hand and I think somebody is, will pass on the mic, isn't it? Okay. And, uh, Please uh, join me uh, in uh, thanking the uh, the leadership, uh, the CEO, Madam, the Dean, the Registrar, and for giving us uh, this uh, uh, opportunity, wonderful opportunity to interact uh, today morning. So this is how I uh, uh, organized my presentation. Uh, I'll give a, a brief uh, overview about uh, health and then about brain, uh, brain health, how uh, uh, brain uh, evolved over a period of uh, time and there are some very important uh, interesting uh, concepts are there in learning. Uh, one very important concept is neurogenesis. So I will tell you what is this neurogenesis and about learning memory and then what actually harms learning and memory and what actually helps uh, these things and also for uh, students I will share few 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 tips about how to improve your overall health and then if there are questions I will answer. Uh, please uh, don't assume that I am a scholar. So whatever I know I will tell. If I don't know, uh, 
still I'll verify and then I'll tell you the answer. If not today, at, uh, uh, maybe next time. Okay. So, a uh, uh, couple of uh, things. Uh, one is this uh, Austin uh, uh, University of Texas uh, conducted a, an experiment. Uh, people, participants were asked to do certain tasks on computer. And then they divided all the participants into two groups. One group, no cell phone. Other group had cell phone, but in silent mode. And it is face down. So they cannot see, they cannot attend any calls. They cannot see what is happening in the cell phone. Silent face down. But still, <laughs> the people who had cell phone, face down in silent could not perform the task on the computer similar to the people who do not have cell phones suggesting that anticipation expectation that a friend may call somebody may call that message will come this sms will come that whatsapp i have to check and all those things that whatsapp that itself disrupted their f focus okay so concentration i i am sure today uh, just give rest to your cell phone for some time maybe another one one and a half hours and uh, i'm sure you will find uh, this this is more interactive and uh, uh, you will find uh, it uh, useful also mindfulness so uh, you may not use your cell phone but also uh, don't think about uh, so many pending things which are you have to do uh, just be with us. Let us all uh, go through this uh, presentation together, not uh, one way. Okay. Now, <coughs> yeah, actually, I wanted to ask uh, someone uh, about the definition of health. Uh, anyway, so World uh, Health Organization has defined health as a state of complete physical, mental, social, spiritual well-being and not merely absence of disease or infirmity. This is the definition given by the World uh, Health Organization. Please, please be seated, I think. Yeah, no, no, please, you, please be seated. I think chairs are there, so no problem. So, uh, when, when you become uh, doctors or even now also, probably somebody will be telling that, enjoyed excellent health all these years suddenly there was a heart attack uh, suddenly there is a stroke so please understand that health problems are not episodic events it is not that uh, somebody enjoyed excellent health for 60 years suddenly had a heart attack nothing like that health problems are health issues are there is a continuum and accumulation the risk factors Somebody who had a heart attack or a stroke at the age of 60 or 70 had a risk factors starting from childhood. It is accumulating, 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 accumulating and then at one stage it manifested. Okay. And also uh, don't uh, think that uh, you are uh, maintaining your health in an excellent way. It is not dependent on might of an individual health. Suppose today morning your breakfast was not good you will not be sitting here like this okay suppose last night you didn't sleep at all you are reading and doing a lot of things okay you will not be able to focus you will be sleepy it depends on your roommate your friend your teacher your neighbor your family suppose if you are not well you go to hospital your health depends on the healthcare organizations Society at large will decide. So, there are multiple factors are there. Also, I am sure uh, the boys must be, uh, maybe all, all must be playing uh, football. You know, you play football? No. Okay. Okay. All the hospitals, all the doctors are like goalkeepers. You know, when you, when, when a person has got health problem, they will go to doctors and hospitals. Goalkeeper, sometimes he saves the goal. Sometimes he cannot. 
Same thing happens in the hospitals and uh, with the doctors also. Sometimes they save lives, sometimes they cannot save lives. Why you want to go to the, up to the goalpost? You stop in the middle. That's why midfielders have got a big prominent role to play. Instead of going to the goalpost, you stop many health problems. You stop many health problems before even they go to the they go to the uh, this wagon. Uh, uh, you need a health care and then go to the hospital. There is no. If ideal healthcare in the world, you see the, the national health services in UK, primary service of Brazil, mental health uh, uh, care of uh, people in Australia, and uh, uh, health promotion of uh, Scandinavia like Sweden, Denmark, Finland. Uh, and uh, uh, the empowerment of uh, people, communities in Africa and the research R&D of uh, uh, United States and the speed and the innovation of uh, things which are done in India and the, uh, the technology uh, of Singapore and the options given to the people of uh, the health problems in France and the, the, the funding of uh, is, uh, Switzerland and the uh, elderly uh, care in Japan. These are all best models. But you see, e even one country cannot have the other. So they, they have excelled in one, but not in others. Okay. So I need a volunteer. Uh, whoever is the best among you in English, please read this. Just read this. Take a, is mic in there? C can someone pass on the mic? A any, only, only one person read on the mic. I think this, this can be given. Uh, you want to read? I could not believe that I could actually understand what I was reading. It doesn't matter in what order the letters, the word are. The only important thing is that the first and the last letter be in the right place. The rest can be a total mess and you can still read it without a problem. This because the human mind does not read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. Amazing her. Huh? Uh, excellent. Uh, what, what, what's your name? Sir, Niharika. Niharika. Uh, big hand to Niharika once again. Not, not even one word is correct. But 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 she could able to read. She could able to read. I I need uh, I need uh, one more volunteer. How, how you would like to volunteer? Yeah. Uh, what do you see on the picture? girl looking like, like a girl having a shawl or something like uh, complete winter attire sir and she's looking back and then so uh, what what's your name lalita sir huh? lalita sir lalita uh, lalita says that there's a young girl on the screen all of you agree or you disagree agrees with Lalita and how many disagree? You have a lot of friends, sir. <laughs> you disagree, sir? Yes. Disagree? Yes. Uh, please pass out. Why, sir? Why you disagree? Uh, this is an uh, old lady. Ah, old, old lady? lady. Yes. yes. <laughs> Is, is it 
is it wisdom or really picture is like that uh, picture <laughs> picture is like that okay. picture is like so that. one picture how it can be young lady how it can be old lady only only one picture not i am not showing two pictures huh anyway uh, for uh, those of you who are still trying <laughs> i'll i'll give a clue so nose ear young lady eye chin old lady many things which are happening in the world uh, no no you can see with both eyes not one eye <laughs> many things which are happening in the world what you see in the uh, tv what you read in the newspaper sometimes what you read in the journals also you have to you have to be very careful you have to you have to use analytical skills don't be carried away by what is shown to you i need one more volunteer what is the name of this bird no no one of you raise hands and then tell otherwise it will become difficult yeah <coughs> okay uh, uh, what is what is this bird no t- tell uh, give, give it to uh, please raise hand and th- give pass on the mic so how many how many people vote for parrot raise your hands uh, all the boys are raising uh? okay majority are raising for parrot any any other any other thing you think anybody else actually uh, not parrot this a lady so be careful be careful in life what you see what you hear what is shown to you don't be carried away all all our understanding all our it's based on pattern recognition you see what our what our forefathers and their forefathers and their forefathers did that pattern recognition is carried away in all our minds you see actually human beings are existing on the planet only for last 200000 years you see and uh, the uh, speech speaking appeared only 70000 years ago agriculture my land my family my farm all those things started only 12000 years ago and the scientific uh, revolution started only 500 years ago industrial revolution started only 200 years ago and all the uh, computational sciences evolved only in the last uh, few decades so you can see earth is there for five almost four and a half billion years but uh, relatively human race on the earth is very young and and also how things evolved you know uh, you have a uh, iphone 1 and then iphone 2 when came they whatever betterment they could able to do they did the, like that up to iphone 15 they didn't just dump all the previous iphones i did not come out with a brand new iphone 15 human brain also evolved like that from uh, rodents to primates to humans this is how whatever whatever see ro- ro- rodents you know they have to heavily dependent on smell for their food for mating for their survival and all those things slowly 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 whatever is required was retained whatever is not required uh, has been eliminated and then new things are added uh, 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 one one uh, over the other 
such a wonderful uh, uh, organ it's a it's a marvelous uh, creation so we are all we are all unique uh, only because of our, our brains i'll give you some idea about brain structure function and all those things so brain actually is not solid brain is uh, uh, semi solid there is a turkish delight is a sweet i think some of you must have tasted so it's a, it's a gelatinous uh, this one so it's about uh, uh, 1.3 to 1.4 kilos weight uh, suspended uh, in a fluid called csf so it has got uh, uh, proteins fats uh, glucose some uh, uh, minerals and trace elements and lot of uh, uh, salt water you know it's like uh, you uh, clothes you fold them and then pack them nicely like that nature has folded the brain and then pack nicely in the head if you make it uh, flat you know if you make it flat each brain will occupy 1.6 meters that is the this one and if you if you remove the the cortex the outer layer you will learn in your anatomy classes subsequently you see those fibers are there here fibers if you if you remove fibers from one brain one person's brain fibers like they're much thinner than hair put one behind the other you know what is the distance it will cover any idea it will encircle earth two times from one person's brain okay and this is the in the middle these are all these are all these are not artistic models these are all real brains you see here this is uh, here this is the eye the real brains extremely delicately dissected and then preserved this is the this is the real brain in the middle you see this is the cerebrum this is the cerebellum this is midbrain this is brain stem this is like a uh, for engineering students this is like a cpu it controls uh, heart it controls uh, breathing awareness it, it controls the awareness okay so brain also follows uh, certain uh, hierarchical pattern like uh, your your uh, uh, your ceo is there your dean is there your registrars are there your teachers are there uh, uh, there is a chain of command each one has to follow the instructions and then passed on to the residents and others students and others like that brain also has got a hierarchical architecture it follows commands a uh, chain of uh, commands okay uh, this uh, gentleman is a neurosurgeon wilder uh, penfield uh, he worked uh, he started uh, uh, montreal uh, neurological institution in montreal canada okay this is the world's first uh, hospital uh, popularly known all over the world as neuro neuro first time uh, under one roof everything neurology neurosurgery uh, neurophysiology neuropathology neurochemistry neuropsychology anything you name neuro everything is under one roof he started almost 100 years ago that time uh, we do not know much about uh, individual functions of each parts of the brain so he used uh, minute electrical currents to stimulate and then identify what uh, part of the brain is doing what function if it is doing function leave it if it is causing problem remove it so that is the technique he developed almost 100 years ago okay and then he he identified the functions and this is how he said uh, leg control is here this is half of the brain leg is here hand is here face is here tongue is here this is known as homunculus okay i'm sure all the people like to be here like to be like this this is from external external look see we got attracted to uh, film stars movie stars and all those things but you know how we look from inside this is looking from outside when you look from inside out you know how we look this is how we look <laughs> okay i need uh, volunteers again 
may be engineering students. Uh, engineering students are uh, management students, uh, uh, engineering. Uh, you want to tell uh, what is what is this number please uh, uh, our time is running the more you volunteer the more i'll tell <laughs> number this is a number okay I, I, you want more clues <laughs> what what is this number uh, mic is not working. Ah. It may be storage capacity of the brain. Storing, what, what, there are no units. Anyway, because, because uh, we are talking about brain, <laughs> uh, suppose if a cardiologist gives this talk, <laughs> any, any, any other volunteer? Okay, these are the. Uh, you, you know, you know how many people are working in Anurag University. How many students are there? How many teachers are there? Suppose if you double the students, or if you double the teachers, if they double the admin staff, how the work will increase and all those things. You got some idea? I'm sure management people will be knowing. So. For you to see, talk, hear, dance, sing, prepare for exams, sleep, all things, these are the number of cells in your body, 37 trillion. Yeah. Each one of you, each one of you have got this many units, cells, cells are like uh, blocks, see the wall has got bricks, you know, like that, like 37 trillion cells are there in your body okay so these cells are born then they will grow they will do their job eye cell will see hear cell will hear and other things will do their jobs and when there is a problem like there is infection there is injury there is tumor they repair themselves and then eventually eventually they will give the mother cell will give birth two daughter cells okay that's how cells which are dead and gone are replaced in the body by the new cells okay by the way our health depends on the interaction collaboration support of each other of all these 37 trillion cells if some cells are suppose if your stomach cells are upset you won't be sitting and listening here so it depends on the integrity and interaction of all these 37 trillion cells so what is happening what is happening in uh, much of the body is it happens in blood you give blood donation in few weeks you get new blood you lose a small part of your skin new skin will form same thing happens to the gut we eat so many things very spicy food, very acidic food and all those things. The gut epithelium will get damaged and it gets replaced overnight. New things will come. Unfortunately, such a thing is not happening in the brain and spinal cord. Okay. And for saying that, this person got Nobel Prize. Raymond Cajal is a Spanish uh, uh, anatomist and a, a neurologist, he came 100 years ago, he came with neuron doctrine. He said that neuron, the number of cells we are born with are fixed. Nothing new will grow at any time. The famous neuron doctrine got a Nobel Prize. Okay. And the, you see the last uh, sentence, it is the science of the future to change if this harsh reality, if any. In fact, the progress which happened subsequently proved that even in brain and spinal cord also new cells are born. You see rats depend on smell. So when the, 
the, uh, the, the neurons are damaged in the smell nerves and even in the inside in the hippocampus, they are replaced. So, in 1960s, it was proven that new neurons are born in rats. And then, uh, <coughs> and then uh, songbirds, songbirds uh, during mating season, they learn singing, they sing to attract the, uh, the mate. And then that time, the new neurons are born in their brains. So, and then this is related to the song they learn. Okay. So, it was proven that uh, new, not only new neurons are born, but also they are re related to learning. Okay. And uh, in uh, 90s, late 90s, some people were dying with uh, cancer, lung, uh, laryngeal cancer. They volunteered for experiments after their death. So they got one, uh, uh, BRDU is a, is a chemical, bromoxoduridine, it is injected into them when they are alive. And they, when they died, their brains were subjected to detailed study and this BRDU gets into the DNA of the neurons. So whatever neurons in their brain which showed BRDU were born, those cells were born after the BRDU was injected into them, it proved that this, this is a newborn neuron. So it was proved that even in, even in adults, new neurons are born. You see, you see the implications, all these things have got implications in learning and memory. So this is, this is, the, this is the number of uh, 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 neurons uh, we have uh, in our brain, 86 billion. 86 billion. You see, if you have some money, first you will spend for essential things. Okay. Let us see where this 86 billion neurons are being spent. Where, where do you think they are spent? Which part of the brain? All are speaking but very muffled, uh, this one, so, so that nobody will hear. <laughs> so, most of the, most of these neurons are actually in the cerebellum. <clears throat> you know, cerebellum we say small brain. Actually, it is not small brain. Cerebellum is the center of automation. Everything you do know. See your routine. You, you, many people must be driving. Two wheelers and four wheelers. You know, your driving is automatic. Your nowadays I see so many people driving with cell phone, talking with cell phone. One hand they will hold uh, the clutch, and other hand they will use cell phone. So, lot of things are automated, things which we do. See, uh, for example, you see cooking, cleaning, singing, dance, anything, many things are automated. All this automation happens because of the cerebellum, small brain. And most of the neurons are in the cerebellum. Only 17 billion neurons are actually in the entire rest of the brain. It's very interesting, actually, to see how these cells learn their job, how do they say. Let us see. This one. This is a marine uh, uh, creature, sea slug. Okay. So one person wanted to study about how cells learn. So what he did, this uh, sea slug, as gills are there here. So, the uh, compared to human uh, neuron is 20 micron, this uh, neurons in sea slug are uh, size is bigger, number is less, it is easy to do uh, experiments. Okay. So, Eric Kandel, Eric Kandel uh, uh, studied the gill, he did two things, light gentle touch of the gill, he saw what happened. And also, when there is intense uh, repetitive stimuli, he has seen what happens. Okay. Now, I think uh, you can make out, when there is a very light touch here, the stimulus cross, it is a, it's a uh, uh, across the, uh, in the, in the nerve uh, uh, 
uh, axons it is electrical and uh, between the two nerves in the synaptic cleft it is a chemical transmission electrical electrochemical transmission. So, there is a local conveying of message and then this was ignored adaptation. When there is intense stimuli, intense and repetitive stimuli, the message went to the boss. What is the boss? Nucleus. It went to the cell nucleus. Cell nucleus ordered to make proteins. Proteins in turn came down and modified the synaptic junction to remember remember the stimulus. So, next time when there was a painful stimuli, the C slug did not take much time. It know it knows what it is and immediately it withdrew the gill. So, it remembered, it learned and remembered all because it is a light or intense and for that I will tell you what happened after that, but uh, uh, I want some volunteers. What what did you understood by this uh, experiment? Any anybody? Uh, ca can you please pass on the mic to anybody? Any anybody who can make a comment about this experiment? This is uh, uh, this is a basis. This is the basis of learning. Every cell. Uh, every cell, maybe in a plant also, in primates, in uh, rodents, uh, even in humans, this is how every cell learns and remembers. So, sir, yeah. So, so with uh, uh, sir knows everything. <laughs> so. You see, with intense uh, stimulus, the new proteins are formed, which has made changed the synaptic junctions in the the connections in the brain are changed by learning. So I I want to know what applied aspect it has got. Any 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 volunteer? Any anybody can tell what what? Uh, if it is not clear, I'll explain. Okay, now. Uh, you have to uh, present something and uh, tomorrow seminar you read uh, uh, some book journals whatever it is and then whatever you understood uh, you will present tomorrow and then day after tomorrow you will forget it that is the that is the light thing light touch Okay. Suppose, suppose you saw the sea slug, the video. Now tomorrow you go and hold it in your hands. You feel it. You touch it. You do the experiment yourself. There is a multi modality involvement. You see something, you hear something, you go and touch it something, you go to the anatomy, why do you dissect the bodies? I mean you can you can actually uh, learn, uh, you can actually, uh, many countries teach anatomy in the computers because there are no bodies to dissect. So learning is multimodal, learning the more intense effort you put, there will be changes actually. Uh, MRI scans are done for medical students uh, three months before exams and uh, soon after the exams to see what changes happened in their brains because of their intense preparations and then there are there are increase in the certain parts of the brain have increased in the volumes. So in future instead of you telling the answer there will be uh, there will be other ways to assess how much uh, uh, you have uh, you have learned and uh, for uh, doing this experiment Eric Kandel got a Nobel Prize in uh, year uh, uh, 2000 uh, for learning and uh, memory. 
Okay. Now, which parts of the brain you think uh, will be involved more in learning and memory? Like, uh, for example, uh, all of you, all of you remember the day you joined uh, the university here and today. I think some of you have completed one year, isn't it? No, not how many months you have completed? How many months, madam? Four months. So, four months ago, you you are walking in the campus. Four months ago. Today, you are walking in the campus. Any change in your walking? Four months ago, your understanding of Anurag University, your understanding of people, your understanding of the place, your understanding of the subject, and today is different. See, you learned, you know, certain things, it's already learning, you already walking, you learned already. There is, there is nothing more, there is no new way of walking. Of course, if you have to learn how to ride a motorbike or a, uh, uh, drive a car, you will learn. Otherwise, whatever you have to learn, that system has to be capable of learning. So, these are the things. You see, this is the, the smell nose. This is a very important uh, part called hippocampus. Okay. And here also, around the ventricles. So each part has got its own role, but I will focus more on this. Okay. So is a, a professor of anatomy, Joseph Klingler. Uh, there is one very famous uh, neurosurgeon called Ghazi Yasargil. He is considered as a father of modern neurosurgery. So Joseph Klingler taught anatomy to Ghazi Asargil and Joseph Klingler mentioned that uh, in the entire nature, this structure, we, you are seeing at the bottom of the brain, bottom of the head. For example, this is nose, this is the back of the head and these are the sides. You are seeing the undersurface of the brain. He said this structure, the most complex in entire nature. You see, this is the uh, magnified uh, view of the same structure. So, there are two right and left uh, hippocampus. You see, it is about 4 to 5 centimeter structure. This is uh, the seat of learning, the seat of memory. It has got about one and a half billion uh, neurons are there. Okay. And it has got, uh, it is the, it is the seat of uh, stem cells in the brain. You see, uh, there is one uh, famous uh, uh, Kamal Hassan's movie uh, and Sri Devi, where after the head injury, she forgets uh, many things. I, I hope all of you remember, isn't it? Huh? Ah, Vasant Kokila. So, <laughs> after, after, uh, after uh, head injury, uh, after uh, brain surgery, after uh, stroke, uh, whatever damage happens, you know, much, it's all because of the damage to the hippocampus. Hippocampus needs continuous uh, supply of energy. You know, energy comes from where, you know, the, the, the food we are eating has got glucose and the air we are breathing has got oxygen. Oxygen will burn the glucose producing energy. And that energy is used to charge the cells in our body. We have 37 trillion cells. You know, just like you charge your cell phone, you know, like that this energy and uh, water <laughs> is actually used to charge all these uh, cells. So, the uh, plasticity means uh, uh, when, when something happens, some adverse thing happens in our life. Suppose you hear a bad news there is an accident, there is an injury, there is an infection, whatever happens, you know, and then people sometimes fail the exam, but then they, they come back, they recover, they, 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 that is the resilience. All this is because of the hippocampus. And also, uh, now, 
you you know that uh, today's uh, day time and you are sitting in the hall and you are attending all this lecture you know all all this is like a gps in your brain you know where you are sitting exactly after 10 years if you people meet later in your later uh, some some other uh, place oh one day we were attending that lecture and we were sitting and all those things so this place this time uh, this occasion all are all are encoded uh, and the technical term is engram it is made like a it's it's a electrochemical it's a proteins are made and it will be stored deep in the brain all this happens all this happens in the hippocampus and the finding this place cells and grid cells again john okifi and uh, his colleagues uh, got uh, nobel prize recently in uh, uh, 2014 that is 10 years ago the nobel prize was given to this uh, three people about uh, the gps internal gps uh, in the in the human brain and also uh, we learned a great deal Uh, about uh, uh, memory uh, and learning from these two people okay uh, until then uh, everyone used to think that uh, uh, memory and learning is distributed in the brain but then uh, after their uh, uh, research uh, it was proven that actually memory is in fact stored in a focal area okay so she is a very famous uh, neuropsychologist uh, madam one uh, your sister is neuropsychologist here so uh, uh, your sister is here uh, okay uh, anyway so uh, her name is brenda miller so and uh, this gentleman is a actually patient very famous patient in uh, neurology he passed away recently he is known as patient hm family never uh, revealed uh, full name also to the world only after he passed away then uh, his photograph and his all the details are now there in public domain so many videos are there in youtube videos if you want you can see patient hm so what happened is patient hm had uh, uh, uncontrolled uh, epilepsy and 1960s he was operated his both hippocampi were removed by surgery after that he could never able to remember anything new in his life he lived in his past he will come and meet you after 5 minutes when he comes back again again he will ask you your name who are you and for what you have come and all those things he never never registered then world has realized that hippocampus uh, plays a very crucial role in encoding information actually memory has got uh, first it has to be register we have to register then we have to store then we have to retrieve all these things are done in the hippocampus the the mechanism to convert short term into long term memory all happens in the hippocampus and uh, you see uh, uh, in uh, last 4 months so many things happened here every day you are coming from your hostels you are attending classes going home hostels and then studying and all those things you must have seen hundreds and thousands of people hundreds and thousands of vehicles cars you don't remember many of those things but few you remember so just try to recollect what you remember and why you remember them okay so in general what happens is from morning to night whatever you have seen whatever you had whatever you touched okay whatever you felt all those experiences they will be in the front side of the brain frontal lobes when you go to sleep you are sleeping but your brain is working what it will do it's like a, a movie replay all things which you have seen since morning 
tonight will be replayed in your brain where hippocampus hippocampus will decide important store not important delete important store like that it will decide and whatever is there in the front see when you are driving car you know you saw that vehicle coming this cycle coming that auto coming and you very expertly negotiated but after crossing that junction you won't remember you just forgot it but suppose you find some snake or a tiger on the way there is another part in the brain called amygdala just like hippocampus amygdala will tell there is a risk to your life there is a snake there is a tiger so next day when you go that side there is no snake there is no tiger but still that event event will trigger a little bit of fear and panic suppose if there is an accident big accident even after one year if you cross that area also oh this is this is the place where accident happened you will be very very concerned because the 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 stories happens like that it is time place it's a, it's an episodic uh, 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 um, stories and then a retrieval so from the front this is the hippocampus this again real brain you can see nose ear so from hippocampus from frontal lobe it comes to hippocampus and then it is filtered and then it goes all the way through the fornix into the some structures you will hear these names later to mammillary body to thalamus and then goes to the cortex and then the filtered information is stored in the respective cortex areas and this is the somebody was telling about uh, stories uh, you you are from engineering department isn't it you you only said about stories brain stories yeah this is actually this is this is how the um, computational uh, uh, storage is uh, is uh, classified we know about uh, 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 gigabytes and uh, terabytes but then there are petabytes and exabytes and uh, human uh, uh, brain storage is 2.5 million gigabyte storage that much uh, capacity uh, is there in all our uh, brains so to perform all these things the uh, there are reverberating circuits are there in the brain the uh, no, number of times number of time times information passes from one structure to the other structures to decide whether that information is uh, important or relevant has to be stored or not so uh, unfortunately this uh, function it's uh, uh, the neurotransmitter levels uh, and the connections also make hippocampus vulnerable for diseases one one i'll just give you one example okay this is a young boy okay he had uh, 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 uncontrolled epilepsy is is a is a budding musician okay while uh, singing in a competition in actually in kerala while singing in a competition he had a convulsion so judges told him to take rest recover he came back after one hour continued his singing and then he got a prize so he is an aspiring budding uh, musician unfortunately he had this uncontrolled epilepsy and uh, that damaged his hippocampus one side you see this is the left side normal hippocampus this is the right side hippocampus which became half because of loss of neurons so he had uh, electrical signatures of seizures coming from this part again you will learn about uh, these things in your future my colleagues did lot of work on him uh, identifying his musical abilities and uh, we i operated on him actually when he was conscious when he was listening to the songs we opened his head when he was listening to songs he was able to identify different components of uh, uh, 
different components of uh, music and because of that uh, we could able to preserve all his musical abilities this is the reorganization extensive reorganization of his brain and uh, his case actually was published if you are interested you can do google search uh, about uh, his uh, case and then uh, uh, you will find uh, all the details and uh, this is the boy after one year states uh, to learn uh, western uh, 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 music and uh, and uh, uh, people came forward people came forward to fund uh, his uh, his uh, uh, his further education uh, in uh, us so again what what do you understood uh, by this uh, uh, illustrative case uh, we have uh, uh, two important concepts are there one is uh, cognitive reserve and second one is neurogenic reserve you know uh, children who are good not only in studies but very good in sports very good in music very good in extracurricular activities they have lot of neurogenic reserve that means they have lot of new neurons are there in their brain when they when they play a sport when they sing a song when they study well it's like uh, one will contribute to the other to increase the number of neurons neurogenesis okay so unfortunately like this boy who had epilepsy he was operated but he recovered very quickly it's like uh, you have uh, you have uh, uh, bank balance lot of money <laughs> you lose a little bit nothing happens so it's like bank balance when you play when you study when you sing when you dance you accumulate lot of new neurons okay that will help you in recovering even if there is a insult even if there is injury even if there is a surgery even in old days it prevents you from dementia it prevents you from alzheimers even people who develop stroke if they have a neurogenic reserve they recover faster recovery is not just dependent on doctors and hospitals it's your intrinsic ability also but uh, why in spite of uh, studying uh, so hard why why you still you people still have problem in uh, exams <laughs> you see this is a, this is a painting a 200 uh, uh, 220 year old painting okay why 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 students why why always you have tension before the exam and then uh, lack of confidence i may not be able to do and all those things so i think you have to you have to realize that uh, learning you need very strong stimulus casual learning will not make new neurons casual learning studying will not make new proteins it will not lead to new connections in the brain uh, intense effort is required and also multimodality okay suppose 
let us take, uh, you want to study about blindness, okay. So, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, any, anybody can raise a hand and then, uh, I think th those two volunteers are standing since morning with mics. Nobody is taking mics. <laughs> uh, just tell, how many blind people are there in India? No, you, I'm just giving an example of, you, you have to learn about blindness. So one is you go to library and then read about blindness. Uh, what sort of changes will happen in your brain when you read in the library? And then to have better learning, what you have to do? So at least you should know how many people are there in the blindness. Any, anybody knows how many people are, blind people are there in, in the world or in India? This is the number. There are 45 million blind people are there in the world, including one third. One third blind people are in India. So all of you are going to be doctors. How you will help these people? So can engineers also help in blindness? So I'll just uh, take you through two examples. Huh? One is there is a school for blind people, blind students uh, in uh, Bangalore. Okay. Visitors come. Visitors come to see those blind uh, children, how they live and all that. You know how they are taken visitors? Visitors are blindfolded. They have to tie a cloth around their eyes. Their eyes are closed. Visitors will hit something and fall down. They don't know where is the bathroom, where is the bed and all those things. So, visitors are taken completely blind to see the blind people. How they live, how they, how they, they have to experience. You, you cannot say that oh, this is, he is blind and you give him some money so that he can uh, buy something and all those things. You have to experience, you have to go through this one. Now, I will show you one brief video, how uh, all of you will become brilliant doctors in future. How you can you can contribute? To, I took blindness as an example. It can be anything. Just see this example. Dr. Govinda Pavinkataswamy was 58 when he founded Aravind. When it first started, the hospital had 11 beds. Its mission was the eradication of needless blindness. Today, it is the largest and most productive eye care facility in the world. See, Magnal's concept is simple. They feel they can train people all over the world, irrespective of different religions, different culture, different all those things, to produce a product in the same way and deliver it in the same manner in hundreds of places. He kept talking about McDonald's and hamburgers and none of it made any sense to us. <laughs> wanted to create a franchise, a, a, a mechanism of delivery of eye care with the efficiency of McDonald's. There are now five Aravind eye hospitals in South India. They are all self-sustaining and together they see over 1.4 million patients and perform over 200,000 sight restoring surgeries each year. Two-thirds of its services are free. At Aravind, every patient who can pay covers costs for two who cannot. Because of their high numbers, the revenue from paying patients not only covers costs for Aravind's free services, but also generates a surplus that funds all growth and expansion. 
all the hospitals send medical teams into the villages. Patients requiring surgery are brought back to the base hospital, where they receive food, lodging, treatment and return transport, completely free of charge. Close to 50% of all the patients Aravind treats are sought out and brought back to the hospital through these screening eye camps. And I don't insist upon that that man must pay me before I do anything for him. I said, give it a sight man, let him give whatever he can give. If he has come and afford, doesn't matter, he can give later. So priority is for human welfare. The paramedical team at Aravind forms the backbone of the system. These young women are recruited from villages around Madurai and are trained in refraction testing, ward and theatre duty, counselling and housekeeping. They had so much of respect to the patient and they were willing to do any type of work for the patient. And they were also willing to share with us in the dream of the hospital. That is how our program started. So from 1976 onwards till today, every year we take about 100 girls from the village. Four highly trained paramedics assist each doctor, thus optimizing the surgeon's time and skill. In this way, a doctor at Aravind averages over 2,000 surgeries a year, against a national average of 220. Doctors are not paid extra because they are doing more operation, but in the other way it helps also. Ours is a teaching institution. The more patients are there, the better the training can be. Uh, we all know ophthalmologists are a premium in this country. We are only 10,000 to 11,000 ophthalmologists for a billion population. So we have to be much more productive to meet the demands of the people. So, and Arvind has pioneered a system that helps us to do high volume work. And I think it's a work in progress. We have reached probably 40-50% of what one could do. This is the intraocular lens production facility which we started in 1992 with support from Seva Foundation in the US. This is the intraocular lens which we produce here and this lens serves as a substitute lens once we remove the natural cataract lens from the eye. In the early 90s there were no eyewell manufacturers in India. We had to import lenses from the West. At that time each lens was costing around $200. They were not affordable in most developing countries. So we devised our own methods of making lenses up to international standards and we were able to sell them at about $5 a piece. Today we manufacture a wide range of ophthalmic products as well and we are exporting them to over 85 countries around the world. Suppose I am able to produce eye care techniques, methods, almost in the same way and make it available in every corner of the world. The problem of blindness is gone. Identify focus area in your life, what you want to become, what you want to do. Put your head and heart together, you will make excellent contribution. Studying is not just for passing exam, you must have a passion, dedication. Okay. Those people, you know, nobody has to tell them that read about I, read about lens and all those things. They, their life is dedicated for that. Okay. Madam, I will just take 10 minutes. 10 minutes, I'll, I'll just stop in 10 minutes time. I'll just take you through another another example. See, you learn about anatomy. Uh, I don't I don't think you have reached brain. You must be with the hand or leg, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So you will you will you will learn uh, anatomy, brain anatomy. To understand, of course, to pass the exam also. But again, if you know the implications. Why you have to study what you are studying, you know, it makes a lot of sense. You see, 
this is an artistic uh, rendition. Uh, you can see the skin, bone. This is a dura which covers the brain. And uh, these uh, veins, uh, bridging veins, uh, heart will pump the blood to the head, brain, and then return, blood returns through these veins. And then because of injuries and uh, assaults and accidents, these veins, they get damaged and then blood will uh, come out and then person will deteriorate. Just see the surgery for a few minutes, you will understand why you should learn anatomy. Okay, just see ya. Anyway, subsequently patient has recovered. So, uh, <coughs> anything you want to learn and remember, you should have a deep understanding. Suppose you want to discuss something out of uh, medicine. Let us take this uh, as just an example. You, you know, all of you know that uh, Europe uh, has made a lot of progress compared to say uh, what Africa has done, uh, what uh, uh, the difference between uh, uh, United States and uh, uh, South America, uh, the gap uh, between uh, uh, Europe and uh, Africa. Uh, how do you how do you understand them? Suppose if this is an essay which you have to prepare or a seminar which you have to present. How, how you will analyze, how you will learn this, not, not medicine, in general, suppose if you have to give it comments, any, any, anybody can explain how Europe uh, actually it is ruled, world, uh, uh, Britain has ruled most of the world. I mean, how all these things happened, in, anybody can explain, if you understand, you will remember. So understanding is a key to remembering. Any, any volunteer? I think, I think they must be getting uh, tired and hungry for uh, lunch break. Anyway, read, that is the title of the book also is the same thing. 
read read that book so in europe you know the uh, along the same latitude rain water agriculture and when wheel was invented you know it is very easy for people to walk move uh, um, whatever ideas are there whatever inventions are there whatever innovations are there it is e easy to spread from one to the other area whereas you see something happened in america to go to argentina there is a sea is there between something happened in europe to go to africa there is a sea people have to wait for hundreds and thousands of years for another industry to develop like a navigational industry to develop okay but uh, you have to understand many of these things and of course so many resources uh, you have now um, um mr balaji mentioned about the role of artificial intelligence like that you see uh, seasonal uh, flu epidemic there is a center for disease control in united states and then they get all this data and they spend uh, enormous amount of funds and uh, personnel to collect all the data google has done very simple experiment they just detected the words people used uh, i am not feeling well i can't come for work i'm running nose uh, uh, i'm on sick leave all those things they just analyzed the words people used and then they found their data and cdc data is matching in fact uh, google uh, was trying to get involved into many things like for example you scribble notes in the file you know you won't see what you have written uh, one week 10 days back and all those things but google will scan all the all the notes of all the doctors nurses technicians everything and then it will tell when patient will die so it is leading to lot of uh, ethical and uh, legal issues in uh, united states and then there was some restrictions on google health research okay so don't depend on google for everything in fact uh, this uh, singer i think you must have heard his songs just see what uh, he is telling about google one evening my father said my son i'm dying and soon i'll be gone but before my final farewell hear me and hear me well do whatever you want to do have a plan or roll the dice but one thing is strictly taboo please follow my advice never google your symptoms that is my only prescription you get a hundred diagnoses and an evil prognosis every sign is a serious condition if you google cough and diagnosis you have got tuberculosis and if you google fever and red you've got ebola and soon will be dead and if you google either runny nose it see as if your brain is leaking juice and if you google itch and prognosis anaphylactic shock or psychosis never google your symptoms seldom it brings any wisdom you want to discover but you might uncover that you have an extra chromosome This is what I heard my father say And then he closed his eyes and passed away The autopsy report was very clear Death from hypochondric fear Which is custom when you google your symptoms Never google your symptoms The hit list is never awesome Pain in your left arm, heart attack alarm Do you feel a little weak? Yes, you got the 
say less If you have a slight anemia You've got leukemia Are you a little crazy? You've got ADHD So never ever Google your symptoms <laughs> So I, I got many more things to share but uh, I think the time given to me is over and uh, I know you are all hungry. I'll just take uh, one or two minutes and then I'll end. I promise, uh, given an opportunity, I'll come again <laughs> and then continue this presentation. But uh, just allow me to finish the this one. So, uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, I, I don't know whether it's a joke or real also. So, we have uh, three important things in our life, time, money and energy. You know, all young people, uh, <laughs> you, you have plenty of time and plenty of energy, but less money. Later when you become consultants, you know, you will have uh, energy and money but uh, you will have uh, no time because you have to you will be running running around things so many things you have to do and uh, elderly people have plenty of money <laughs> plenty of time but no energy so i'll give you share one formula uh, simple how you can optimize okay so you divide everything uh, either your time or your money or your energy into these four quadrants first is important and urgent second one is important but not urgent third one is it is not important but it's urgent fourth one is neither important nor urgent and this is the way to solve it each quadrant this quadrant do it this quadrant do it after finishing this it's urgent but you cannot do so you delegate it and this one leave it so if you can if you can organize things it becomes easier for you and also i leave you one with a very small experiment you can go home and do it you can do in your hostel uh, at your leisure time so we have these four domains you have your uh, personal things like your uh, your health and uh, and uh, this is uh, what you do here in med school engineering school and uh, you have a uh, you have a family you have to you have a social life and all those things and you have spirituality so this is a perfectly drawn uh, square you draw how much time, how much money, how much effort you are giving for each one and then see how is the shape. For me, it's something like this, a uh, lot of time for work and uh, uh, very less limited for others. So this, it's a distorted uh, square. You, you draw for yourself and then see how it is whether you are happy with or not. If not, you have to make some corrections. What pro probably people think the best is this one. You give equal importance to yourself, your profession and your family and society. Spirituality is all encompassing. En en so it's involved in everything. You, you you serve the patient, there is a bit of spirituality involved. You take care of your family. Spirituality is not worship alone. Spirituality is in the service itself. So, with this uh, 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 thinking attitude, you will have, I am sure, you will have a lot of uh, uh, happiness and fulfilling uh, careers. Okay, I will I'll stop here. Uh, uh, if there are questions on this, whatever I spoke, I'll answer. Uh, if uh, uh, if administration allows, I'll come some other time, maybe after your exams when you're 
free to tell uh, more things. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll remember and cherish this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, good morning, sir. Actually, good afternoon, sir. I had a little query. Uh, since you have 30 years of experience in this uh, field of medicine. Yeah. Uh, uh, please don't keep the mic. Move the mic. Keep it steady. And talk clearly and loudly. Uh, sir, I ha actually have a small query. Yeah. Since you have 30 years of experience in this field, uh, and me being the beginner, actually fresher, uh, first year MBBS student, I want to ask you that there are many stigma related to medicine that uh, we don't have any social life, or it would be very tough as a journey to, uh, like, you know, to conquer. With your experience, uh, I want to ask what is the biggest achievement you feel in your career path that you have had till now? Uh, and what keeps you going in this career? Like? Uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, you, you, you people, it's a very interesting uh, uh, point. It's like uh, very, the core of the purpose of our existence and our profession. So, uh, uh, Sir William Osler, uh, is uh, considered as father of medicine, father of modern medicine. So he has mentioned uh, first and uh, foremost uh, requirement of a person to become a physician is uh, willingness to help other person who is suffering. Somebody is suffering you are volunteering, you are willing to learn and then help that person. That is the, that is the foremost uh, requirement to become a physician. Need score is all different. Need score is for, uh, I mean, lakhs of people are writing, so there should be a mechanism to select few. So, uh, in my uh, career, uh, I made uh, uh, changes in lives of hundreds and thousands of people. Very fulfilling, very fulfilling journey. I'm so happy that I became a doctor, I became a surgeon, I could able to help people. Uh, uh, some of my patients, uh, they became uh, vice presidents and uh, CEOs of companies. And uh, uh, the people I operated some 30, 25 years ago, they're, they're doing extremely well. Uh, I mean, what more in life you you expect or you uh, you need? Very very fulfilling careers. Uh, don't take uh, uh, studies very casually, lightly. You have to put your heart and head together with passion, with, with very intense desire. With learning is self motivated. You have to learn to solve problems of people. So very fulfilling. Thank you. Also, uh, if, if I can just give one more example, I'll just take two minutes. Uh, one young girl uh, came to uh, Tamil Nadu with her father, uh, their uh, of, uh, um, American uh, descent, uh, more than 100 years ago. The young girl saw women in India are dying during uh, delivery because it's uh, it's not permitted uh, for male doctors to attend to uh, delivery 100 years ago in India in 
uh, villages in India. So they were dying and uh, she got very much affected by seeing deaths. She returned to New York, studied medicine, came back to India, started one bed, one bed, single bed for deliveries and then that single bed healthcare now became 3000 bedded hospital. Anybody can name that hospital? Huh? Uh, CMC Vellor, Christian Medical College Vellor. The name of that girl is Ida Scudder. Ida Scudder is the name of the girl. You can do Google search. YouTube videos are there. So with passion, you can achieve anything in life. With passion and determination. No? Thank you. Thank you. As a student, I could sense the importance of learning and memory from the excellent talk. Your insights and expertise have truly enriched our knowledge on the subject. And I do hope all of my fellow students felt the same. Thank you, sir, for taking time out of your busy schedule to address us. I request the audience to show our appreciation through another hearty round of applause. Before we conclude this event filled with inspiration and insights, I, I would like to invite Dr. Balaji Itla sir, Neelima ma'am and uh, Lakshmi Prasanna ma'am on stage in order to felicitate uh, Dr. Bhaskar Malla Rao sir. Dr. Malla Bhaskar Rao sir. I'd like to now hand over the mic to Lalita for the word of thanks. Thanks, Soria. As medicine is a continuous learning, we would continue with some more interesting learning sessions in near future. But for today, we need to conclude the session with a word of thanks. On behalf of our Nilima Institute of Medical Sciences and Anurag University, I, Lalita, extend my heartfelt gratitude for each one of you for gracing us with your presence at this enlightening seminar and on the intricacies of learning and memory. Throughout the seminar, Dr. Malla Bhaskar Sir's insightful discourses has left an indelible mark on our collective consciousness, igniting a spark of curiosity within us to explore the depths of our cognitive abilities. His words resonated deeply, reminding us that learning is not a destination but a journey. And memory is a compass that guides us through the life's labyrinth. I extend my heartfelt gratitude and thanks to Dr. Malla Bhaskar Rao sir, um, and as well as to our esteemed management, our beloved Dean ma'am, Neelima ma'am, and our registrar sir, and our organizers for their unwavering support. Your collective efforts have made this seminar an astounding success. And for that, we are truly grateful. In the words of great philosopher Aristotle, the roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. 
Today we have tasted the sweetness of knowledge. Thank you once again to everyone.